Today on Quitna, we're going to talk about LDAP injection. Oh, what's up, man? What's up, man? I'll this real quick. I'll catch you later. Cool, cool, We literally cool. just did that left-handed. That's so true. So for the viewers, it looks like it was right-handed. That's true. They actually have a new DAP now, too. What's that? So you go like this. Yeah. Boom, and then you let it go. Oh, that makes sense. Oh, yeah. That makes sense. Yeah. yeah. That's it. You just got educated on Quitna. You're welcome. So let me give you a quick refresher on LDAP before we can understand how attackers can abuse the protocol. So LDAP stands for Lightweight Directory Access Protocol, in part because it can drink less than its counterpart DAP. No, I'm just kidding. So LDAP, think about that last P, protocol. So what does that tell you? Well, that's kind of what it does, right? It's actually a protocol that's going to query information from an LDAP server or database. Now, what does that mean? What kind of information is going to be stored in an LDAP server and a connected database? Well, typically authentication information. So what does that mean? Well, we're talking about usernames and passwords, right? So what we can do is we can kind of try to log in or authenticate into a web server. That protocol is going to go ahead and pull the information from the backend database and server and kind of return that information and kind of handles that queries, right? So this kind of makes sense why there's such an attack called the LDAP injection, because obviously that protocol in this process is a very important sensitive part of you know the overall security process. So as an attacker, this is kind of a prime target for us because we want to see if we can mess with the authentication process. So what we're going to look at is actually a few examples of uh, how an attacker can kind of create malformed queries to pull more information than they're supposed to or try to bypass authentication. So I actually uh, taught LDAP injection in a class one time. I think I did okay, pretty well. So actually I'm going to turn it over to Teacher Sam and I'll let him kind of uh, walk you through the actual behind the scenes code of LDAP injection. So remember that we had mentioned that the most common place for injection attack is basically places within a web application that is going to be reading user input, right? So we had mentioned a few uh, examples would be URLs and input fields. So that pattern is true for LDAP injection. So let's actually take a look at a few different places where LDAP injection can happen and what it would actually look like. So the first uh, example that we want to give is when we're trying to learn more about a user, right? So we are querying to basically, as the attacker, we're trying to enumerate a user. So this will be our original or normal query. And you can notice if we're going to change the query or we're going to you know, do a, do a malform query, for example, we need to change that, that last part, right? So we're going to change our zone from public to a little asterisk, which basically means just like pull all, right? So by using this query, the attacker can basically obtain all information on the user, Sam, and not only the public, the, just what's available publicly as what would happen in the original query. Now, you're probably wondering, LDAP, as we talked about, is a protocol that's often used to query authentication information. So when are we going to get to the authentication attack? Well, guess what? We're here. So let's look at that uh, example. So this specific type of LDAP injection is going to put, it take place not in the URL, but actually in an input field, like a username or login. So what we're going to try to do here is we're, again, trying to bypass authentication. And the way to think about how LDAP works is what we're going to try to do is basically if there's an if, if we know a username we don't need to know that username's password and able in order to be able to log in right so we can type something like this if we add uh, a username that we know that exists right and then we close it and add an ampersand um, what that actually means, and then, but by the way, in, in the password, if, if you if you do um, if, if you perform this attack, the password can be anything. You can literally just type in anything, uh, and that's because the ampersand symbol will actually end the query after the first line. So basically, what you're asking the web application to ask the backend database is, hey, check to see if we had a valid user named this, right? And then if so, allow him to log in. You're basically only creating kind of one true condition, right? You're saying, hey, is this first part true? Well, we know it's true because we know that's the username. Don't even check. Don't even bother to check to see if there is actually a password that matches up to it, right? Well, I certainly learned something from that guy. Hopefully you did as well. So what you just saw was a sample from CyberVista's very robust on-demand video library. 
Um, so we try to break down uh, content in kind of uh, ways that make sense. And on top of that, they're bite-sized chunk videos, anywhere from five to 10 minutes that really, again, explain the overall content and then go into the details of how this stuff actually works. So we're showing and telling as well. So thank you so much for tuning in for Quitna Sam and Teacher Sam, and we'll see Quitna Sam next week back on Quitna. See you guys.